Hello students, welcome to 8.5, Angles of Elevation and Depression. Today, student, after this lesson, students will be able to solve problems involving angles of elevation and depression. Make sure you have your calculator handy because in order to do this, we need to continue to use our trig functions. A few vocabulary to start it off. Um, the angle of elevation. The angle of elevation is an angle formed by a horizontal line and an angle of sight to an object above that line. So if you're normal, if you're this person, you're looking out, normally you look straight across, all right? And that's your horizontal line. But then maybe you notice, hey, look, your mom's waving at you in the stands, and you look up. That would be an, eleva an angle of elevation because you are looking up. It's so that angle from where your normal sight looking up. Well, then the angle of depression is the angle formed by a horizontal line. So maybe your mom, they're up in the stands, they have an angle of depression because they've got to look down. Here's their horizontal line, all right? And they, they're they looking down to you, all right? Whoops, okay? So it's that angle where they have to look down. Okay. So. Let's start off. First off, we've got example one. The crossbar of a goal post is 10 feet high. If a field goal attempt is made 25 yards from the base of the goal post and it clears, it needs to clear by one foot, what is the smallest angle of elevation at which the ball could have been kicked to the nearest degree? Okay, so we've got a kicker. They've got to kick the ball through the uprights. Okay. The uprights are 10 feet tall and they have to clear by one foot. And we can just kind of move this off to the side so you can kind of see that. All right, so we've got that. We've got our triangle here. All right, well, what do we need to know? We need to find this angle and we know this, the side that's opposite and the side that is adjacent. All right, a few things we need to switch up though. The total vertical distance is one plus 10. All right, so our total vertical distance is 11. Okay, and that's 11 feet. Now, check this out. This says 25 yards. All right, we need to have common um, units, so we need to change 25 yards. All right, you're multiplying it by 3, 3 feet in a yard. This is going to be 75 yards. Okay, now I said earlier that we need to find the angle. And with it, we have the opposite and the adjacent. So we're going to use our Sokotoa. All right, and you're taking a look. Well, what has opposite and adjacent? Yeah, tangent. All right. So we've got our kicker. We're going to use the tangent of our angle is opposite over adjacent. All right. So it's 11 over 75. Okay. Now, we do not need to cross multiply this because this is just being divided by 1. This is going to be a number. Okay. So Start that off. 11 divided by 75. Let's see if it's something nice. Uh, gross. It's a long, long number. Do not round this off. Very important. Don't round it off. Kind of like we said yesterday. All right. Now, if you want, you can just leave it as a fraction. We can say the tangent of y is just that fraction. And then we can get another exact answer. All right. So when we're plugging this on, it's just the fraction. Um, yesterday or earlier, we talked about the answer part. Um, you can use a fraction as well. Now, we want to know the angle of y, not just the tangent of y. All right, so to undo the tangent, do the opposite, which is that inverse tangent. So we're going to inverse tangent both sides. Those tangents will cross out, and we'll just be left with y. Okay, so on our calculator then, we're going inverse tangent, second tangent up above, of 11 divided by 75. All right, hit enter. Ooh, now, does that seem right? No, you know what? Yeah, my, I'm not in degree mode. So let's try that one more time. All right, so I'm here. We can quit out of this now. Okay, so I'm gonna try this one more time. 11 divided by 75. And always look, make sure your calculator's in degree mode. Sometimes you see a little D-E-G, and that means it's in degree mode. So yeah, we've got 8.34. So I know that that's that. 
that says to the, the nearest degree. So you could also say y is 8 degrees. All right. Next example. A lifeguard is watching a beach from a, a line of sight 6 feet above the ground. So they're 6 feet above the ground. She sees a swimmer at an angle of depression, meaning she has to look down, of 8 degrees. What is the face-to-face -face distance from the lifeguard to the swimmer? All right. Well, again, let's take a look at this. Um, we're going to be using Sokotoa. Well, her line of sight and the swimmer, since she has to look down, well, she because the swimmer's at this um, water level, the water is the same as the beach for the most part. All right, so I've got six degrees, and I want to know from her face to his face, what is this distance? All right, okay. If this is my angle, see if you can figure out what do I use sine, cosine. Or tangent. Yeah, you got it. We're going to use tangent because 6 is opposite, x is adjacent. All right, so I'm going to do the tangent of 8 degrees equals 6 over x. Okay. From here, all right, because x is part of the, um, our equation, I'm going to cross multiply, or part of my fraction here. Okay. The unknown is right there. So I'm going to get 6. Whoa. That's not right. That's supposed to say 6 equals x times the sine of 8. All right. And then from here, I am going to need to divide both sides by the sine of 8. Now I can use my calculator. What is the sine of 8? 8 degrees. Oh, OK, so it, don't round that off. All right, when you plug it in, we want exact answers. So divide both sides by the sine of 8. So grab your calculator. Instead of rounding off, we can just go 6 divided by the sine of 8 degrees. I know it's still in degree mode because I changed it earlier. 43.11. All right, so I know that that lifeguard is 43.11 feet from the swimmer. All right, angles of elevation and depression involve still got to use those trig functions.